Hello faithful viewers and welcome back to another review. This time we are looking at the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Class Bludgeon. Not the Voyager Class, the Rare Deluxe Class that came in a Toys R Us exclusive with Autobot Whirl in a pack that I believe was called the Masters of Metallicato. Metallicato being a fictional martial art form that the two of them are expertise in. So this version of Bludgeon is a redeco of the first movie Deluxe Class Wreckage and Transformers into an M1126 Striker infantry carrier. Yeah, that's not a made-up thing, this is a legit vehicle that exists. Now, as we can see here, Bludgeon's main colour deco is a really nice green, and, uh, well, from the outset, that looks like it, but if we turn him over and have a look at some of the robot kibble, we can see his secondary colour is this nice shade of brown. I think these colours actually complement this mould really, really nicely. Wreckage, in comparison, was kind of more of a, a camouflage grey and white combination. I think that the combination of green and brown for this guy really suits the mould and makes him pop a lot more than his predecessor version. So, having a more in-depth look at the vehicle mode, uh, obviously we've talked about the colour, but this vehicle mode does have a lot of really nice detail all over it. You can see kind of like a tank cannon kind of aesthetic going on there. There's a nice black Decepticon symbol on the front, and you can just see some of this nice detail work all over here. Rivets and just moulding, and it's really quite nice. It's a really solid vehicle mode. Looking at the side here, we can see KN2764, whether that's the model number or just the designation of this vehicle, whether it be in the military or not, I don't particularly know. We have a really nice gun to it up here on the top, but that's kind of it. It's a very nice, short, simple vehicle mode, and it just works. It's very solid. Bludgeon is very easy to transform. First of all, what we want to be doing is unclipping this panel at the back, folding all of this up and out of the way. We can see here there is some nice integrated weapon storage for his swords, and I really appreciate that. We can fold those panels out, take them out, move them off to the side, and just fold them back in. Then we want to be taking these back tires, these are going to be the legs, pull them all the way out, and just hinge them freely out to the back take the tyres at the front and pull them out and rotate them forward. These are obviously going to be the arms and we can just bend these down as we do, which only leaves the head reveal. Now, being that this originated as a first movie figure, there is an automorph gimmick, so we want to help it by just unclipping the front slightly there. Then we can take this fake back gun, push it and then keep pushing it until you get the head reveal. Unfortunately, the shoulders don't clip into anything. That's a real bummer, but we can just finish off by pushing that back panel back. Here we go. Here is Bludgeon in his really stunning looking robot mode. I really do like how this figure looks. Uh, again, I think the paint job just complements it a lot more than wreckage. Uh, so if we have a good look at his noggin, and hopefully you'll be able to see all of this, there is some really nice detail in terms of his head. He, he does kind of have like this skull aesthetic going on for his face, which is really nice. I know it's very difficult to see considering that the lighting circumstances aren't the best here. I'm working on it. So we'll just activate this. Number one, to show off the light piping, which is pretty decent. You can see his eyes glowing purple there. But number two, just so you can see his head in a little bit more detail, uh, hopefully. There's a nice Skeletor kind of grimace going on there for his head. Let's take that off. Uh, coming down, just having a look at everything, there's a nice translucent purple gun sticking out of his chest, whether that would uh, insinuate that the vehicle mode gun is meant to be for one poking through. You can insinuate it that way if you wish. Uh, there is, an, again, a nice distribution of colour all throughout him. He has a really nice profile about him as well. He's not your typical animalistic Decepticon from the films. He doesn't have any chicken legs or anything. He is nice and uniform, and it looks really, really good on him. He just, he looks like a trooper. If Wreckage had made it into the first film, I would have quite enjoyed seeing this character model. Uh, right, in terms of accessories, Bludgeon comes with a couple of sword blades. We can see they are cast in a nice translucent purple for the blade. It is clear plastic, so just be careful. And to activate them, there is a switch on the top here, which you flick it and they flip out. And that's really, really cool as well. Again, the weapon storage in the vehicle mode, really appreciate. And then to attach them to the robot mode, you can put the pegs here on the slots here on the backs of the arms. 
and that looks cool. I really dig how this guy looks with his weapons as well. It's a bit of a shame there isn't any alternative storage for the robot mode specifically, like you can't put them on his back, but if you do so wish, you can simply fold up the blades and that's good enough. If they don't hinder the articulation in any way, it's just, it, it's good. It's really, really good. Solid first movie figure we've got here. In terms of articulation, Bludgeon's head can rotate a whole 360 degrees. It is a little bit hindered by the kibble that's behind his head and in front, and it's not helped by the fact that the shoulders don't plug in, so whenever you move them, the automorph gimmick is triggered. If they'd found a way to have fixed that, that would have been better. Uh, but in terms of the shoulders, they're on ball joints, so they can move out that far. They have a full 360 degrees of rotation. There's a double jointed elbow, so you can move that over 90 degrees of a bend. In terms of the wrists, they do swivel, but only just so about that far and then about that far uh, in terms of the waist he has a little bit of rotation but again it is hindered because of his back kibble in terms of a spread he can move his legs out that far in terms of forward kick about that far so that's okay in terms of a back kick only really about that far the kibble does hinder it again if you move that panel out of the way then it allows him to kick back further in terms of a knee uh, yeah there's a, it's almost a 90 degree bend there of a knee uh, as long as you've moved it out of the way of any kind of kibble. If this panel is back in place, then that really does hinder him and he can, he can only move about that far. And then in terms of foot articulation, again, it's on a ball joint, so you've got full range of motion regarding the feet. Really good. For a very quick size comparison, here he is against fellow first movie deluxe class figure. This is Jazz, so you can see how deluxes match up against one another. And then here he is against Whirl, the figure that he comes with in the Toys R Us exclusive two-pack. And Whirl here is representative not only of a voice class figure but also of a modern leader class figure they come up to about this high nowadays so this is a comparison of a old standard deluxe against both an old voyager and a modern leader so there we go then that's the review of bludgeon i think it's a really nice figure and of the two that come in that toys r us pack i think he is the superior figure now granted i did actually get it wanting to get a because i wanted a blackout model uh but i think bludgeon is actually the better of the two figures if you can get this guy certainly get him he's not perfect by any means obviously like i said his shoulders don't tap in so the automorph gimmick triggers whenever his posture while it is nice and uniform it always does mean that he is looking down so his head doesn't sit straight unfortunately but apart from that really really nice good articulation all round good gimmickry really nice paint i do highly recommend getting this deluxe if you can uh, as for the voyager class bludgeon i can't possibly comment because i've never seen it uh in person but i know it is more based off his g1 counterparts but you know get whichever bludgeon i suppose takes your fancy i do recommend this one because it's just a nice figure and if you want a representation of wreckage i still would recommend this one over the original version simply because the paint is much much nicer really nice i give it a thumbs up thank you everybody so much for stopping by and checking out this review like and subscribe if you haven't already and share it around to help out the channel and until the next time see you all later